All right, this is Coffee Chug, and today I am here to show you how to make an electric tree in which your lights of your tree light up. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and show you what you need. What you're going to need is some um, copper wire. 22 gauge is what we have found to use and be best. You can use any gauge you want, but this seems to work. We've got three kinds here. We have the exposed regular wire, and then we've got the red and green, which have the fine coating over it, um, so we can get some conductive things going. So you're gonna need those three coils, a pair of snipping pliers to cut the cable, and then you're gonna need a power drill to get your cables ready to go. Once you have it made, looking ahead, you're going to need a solder pot and you will also need a soldering iron and some helping hands, which I have over here for your soldering. You can use any LED lights you like. These are the ones that we use. Um, they change color on their own, but you can use any LED of any size. It doesn't matter. And then obviously, the common sense thing would be that you would need a power supply in order to provide power. For this project and the things that we use, as you've seen before, we use the Adafruit Adjustable Power Supply Kit. We make our kids make their power supply kit. Everything they do, they need to make and understand on their own. So let's go ahead and get to this in making our electric tree. The first thing we need to do is to create our cable or our code cord of copper wire. So what we do is we'll take these and you need to find a, a location. For me, I use a door handle because it works best for school. And then you just need a chair about 10 feet away. Um, if you want a bigger tree, obviously you can make these longer. And for the first step is just to tie the cable around the door handle. And hopefully nobody walks in here. And you run this out, we have found 10 feet to work best. So I'll spool this. And uh, wrap this around. Grab my tool here and tie this end. To the tree or the door handle and you want it somewhat snug all right I'll go ahead and do that make sure this doesn't fall off and I'm gonna go ahead and do that the same thing for the red and the plain copper so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll show you what will happen once you've got them all there all right so you can see that I've got each of the three tied in a rod, basically six string is what we have. You want to make sure that they're nice and snug, about as straight as they can be. And what you're going to do right by the door handle, once you kind of get a firm grip on those, find a good spot and you're going to snip them. All right. You know, you want to keep this tug so that your copper coils don't finagle on you. I do a short little twist here at the tip. You can see that. Then I'm going to open up my power drill here. And this is what the kids love. It's amazing how many have never used a power drill before. And you insert that end into the drill. Make sure it's nice and tight. I've had kids that will do this and don't tighten it all the way. And then it shoots out and that's not fun. Then, with your cables here, we're going to tighten them. You usually hold it down for about 10 or 15 seconds. You get a nice tight coil, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. Let me tighten this up here a little bit. It's not quite as tight as what I would need. And actually, I'm going to change this post here to... Uh, Okay, 
Okay, so this will give you a better idea. Using a podcast hand, hold this about 10 or 15 seconds and you'll kind of become like a braid. A little bit more here. Right when it starts to get a little snug. There. I got that. So we're good. So what you're going to do then, what I have found is best to kind of wrap this around something. You can make something out of cardboard. What I like to use works out really well because I love Lego. It's a Lego base plate. So I'm going to loosen this up here. I've got my coil. I'm just going to wrap this up here just like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be tight because you're going to be cutting this here in just a little bit. But this just keeps it from locking and overlapping on itself here a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do this. And then we'll cut this tip off here. And grab my trusty tool. Like so. So I'll cut this tip off here. And there you have it. So now the next step is to cut this cable for the tree that we're making we're going to use about nine inch increments so I've got my ruler here let's see where nine is it doesn't have to be perfect the key here is kind of make them all the same size so I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to continue to cut these relatively the same length over and over here. And you should end up with about 11 or 12 of these. I mean, it all depends on how far you stretch out your cables. If you want a bigger tree, obviously, you're gonna have to spool that out. But for about 10 foot, you'll get quite a few of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting these like so here. It's always kind of good to double check every once in a while, make sure you're getting relatively the same. I think some of these got a little bit extra. And I may want to trim those up here a little bit. Just to, it's easy to keep them the same. So just a few more here. Nine inches seems to be about the minimum with um, this I've found going less with kids. Doesn't tend to work out real well. But it's obviously your tree, so you can do with it what you want, modify it, tweak it, add it, enhance it, make this cooler and better. And obviously, if you do, please share it, because I'm always up to learn. And uh, by far, not an expert. Just love to share what I'm doing with students, as well as my own learning. So hopefully other people share, so that we can all get better and improve and continue to be lifelong learners, because that's in the end what it's all about. All right, so now that I've got all my coils here, this is a part that you may need some help with the kids just depending on their strength and the age. But now we're just gonna just twist and just keep on twisting to make this as tight as we can do it. And this is the trunk of the tree here, so you're gonna make it kind of what you want. 
All right. Once you have that, then you frame this tree branch. This would be the kind of the time to do it. However, you want your tree to look. And so, if I want to bend in my trunk. I can do that. Um, however, so I may try to come up with a funky design here a little bit for my tree. It's up to you. Then I'm not going to sit here and show you how to do all this, but you're going to want to separate these. One end is going to be your tree branches. So you're going to want to divide and split all these wires up, keeping the red and green together. The gold, it doesn't matter because we're not going to do anything with down here. All right. The more you unwind them, the bigger your tree branches are going to be. So that's something for you to figure out. You know, if I uncoil more, my tree branches will get a little bit bigger. If you do less, it'll look less. Okay. The other end, you will split them apart, doing the same thing, but then you're going to group all your red, all your green, and all your gold together. And so when you're done, you can see here on this tree, I've got my red and green close together, my gold separated, because that's what we're going to be soldering the lights to. At the bottom, and your roots can be any size, mine are a little bit smaller, but I've got all my red wires grouped together, all my green grouped together, all my gold grouped together. And this is going to be the roots, this is how we're going to get the, the electricity flowing through your tree. So, with your tree branch, you're going to be unwinding these wires, this takes some time. Red and green close together, gold doesn't really matter where, forming your, your tree branch. At the bottom is going to be your root, separating them by color, green together, red together, gold together. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so once you get the roots done and split, I like to trim them so it's a nice flat edge on all three. We're not going to mess with the copper at all whatsoever. But the red and green, we got to get these all conducted as if they're one wire. So this is where it's really careful, and I've talked about this. I'll talk about it again, the solder pot. We usually don't have the kids use because it's so hot. A burn from this would be really, really bad. So I do this. Now, holding it like I do now, the heat's going to flow through these wires. So this will get very, very hot. And so sometimes it does help to have something to hold on to. But for the sake of this, hopefully I won't burn myself. But you're going to stick this one tip in at a time. It'll start to smoke. And it's actually going to melt all that green off. And it's going to solder all these wires together. And so I don't know if you can see. I don't want to get too close. But you can see the green oozing off the top there. Okay. Usually about 10 or 15 seconds. When we pull this out, it should just be one nice soldered group of green wire together here. which it is, and you can see that right there. We'll go ahead and do the same for red. And it should boil, and or not boil, but steam and smoke and all that good stuff here. It's doing that right now. Make sure all those wires mesh together. And that looks really good. So I'm going to let that cool off. And then we'll solder, do the soldering of the treetops and solder the lights on. And we're going to have ourselves a tree. All right, so once you have your wires split, or you've got your red and green wires close together, and the copper wires, however you want to organize, it's then time to dip the red and green into a solder pot. And you can see I already got this going. Now, to be careful, this is extremely hot. And then I would not... Maybe let your kids use this. This is something that when I do my engineering, I'll actually use the solder pot for the kids because this would lead to a serious burn. Um, and so what you do, you take the tips. I've got my red and green here. I actually place them right in the solder pot. And it may be kind of hard to see, but it'll kind of boil that uh, coating right off. And then we'll leave the solder for the tips ready to go. And so this is probably about time for me to put some new solder in there. It's kind of... Not the best, but you can see that how the tips are nice and clean and ready to go. So we'll go ahead and uh, solder these lights on and we'll show you then the finished product. All right, so I got my helping hand here um, to keep my tree braced. And you can see that I've already got some lights put on, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do this. What we're using are these lights. You can use any LED lights, but these actually change color on their own, which just gives a little extra flare. And so 
and I buy these in bulk. I got a huge bag here. Um, it would be important that I would have used red or green. For me, I use the green as my positive um, and the red as the negative. So make sure you solder all these on. Also keep in mind these are live wire. So if I merge these two layers together when the battery's on, it's going to short them out. So we usually put some uh, heat shrink on these to keep these so the live wires don't connect and, and cause these bulbs to burn out. But for now, uh, we'll show you just how to solder. You can go back and add those at any given time. And so this becomes a little difficult. This is tricky. It takes kids a probably the most amount of time. What I like to do is just put a little bit of solder on the tip of my solder iron and try to get at least one arm on there. And then you kind of got to work the other LED light leg so it's kind of close. And if you have an extra helping hand or an extra pair of students, you can do that. This looks like it held up pretty well. So I'll go ahead and quickly solder these together. I got a problem here with the solder. And um, I'll continue to do this for all the lights. And we always have kids put four or five lights on. You can put more on if you want. And then we'll go ahead and clip up the power and we'll let you see how it looks, which looks awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give some power to this electric tree here. What we're using is the, uh, from Adafruit, the adjustable power supply kit. We believe in our engineering class that kids need to make everything. So they have to make their own power supply kit, which is what you see here. So we're gonna turn that on. We've got alligator clips. Uh, the positive and negative and so what we're going to do is go ahead and clip these up. It's very important uh, Sometimes when you clip these on the lights don't work So you want to check to make sure that where you used a solder pot that you didn't actually solder the red and green together anywhere because that shorts out um, Your supply and so as you go through here um, I had to go through and actually clip some wires spread them apart uh, because I had actually soldered them and when I originally wanted to show you none of the lights worked and I know that my soldering was good so always check that because once you solder it they do become live wires because the coating has been removed and so we'll go ahead and clip this on and you can see I've got supply and these are the really cool lights that change color you know so you see these in the arts and crafts stores you know, garden centers and they charge an arm and a leg for wire trees with lights you can make this very, very cheap. You know, you go through now, I could go if I want and spray paint this, make it all black, like a Halloween tree or maybe festive, uh, you know, redo this a little bit, make it look like a Christmas tree. But there you go. There's my electric tree. As you can see, it's awesome. I'm probably going to add a few more lights, maybe redesign where the lights are showing up and the, the tree itself. But that is electric tree. All done relatively very cheap and a lot of fun and a great, soldering project and project for students to learn once again the key to small details taking your time double checking your work and when you're done you have an awesome project and this will look really really good with the robotic pro pumpkin project which i'll go ahead and uh, show you in another video here soon you can really create a really cool landscape i hope you enjoy if you have questions thoughts concerns let me know and i look forward to hearing from you as well as other ideas that i should explore or do or make these projects even better this is Coffee Chug, signing out with the electric tree.